François Noël Babeuf, French, FSWA Enel Babeuf, the 23rd of November 1760 to the 27th of May 1797, known as Gracious Babeuf, was a French political agitator and journalist of the French Revolutionary period. His newspaper Le Tribune du Peuple, The Tribune of the People, was best known for his advocacy for the poor and calling for a popular revolt against the Directory, the government of France. He was a leading advocate for democracy, the abolition of private property and the equality of results. He angered the authorities who were clamping down hard on their radical enemies. In spite of the efforts of his Jacobin friends to save him, Babeuf was executed for his role in the conspiracy of the equals. The Gracchus nickname likened him to the ancient Roman tribunes of the people. Although the words anarchist and communist did not exist in Babeuf's lifetime, they have both been used by later scholars to describe his ideas. The word, communism, was first used in English by Goodwin Barmby in a conversation with those he described as the disciples of Babeuf. He has been called the first revolutionary communist. <laughs> Early life Babeuf was born at St. Nicaise near the town of St. Quentin. His father, Claude Babeuf, had deserted the French Royal Army in 1738 for that of Maria Theresa of Austria, reportedly rising to the rank of major. Amnestied in 1755, he returned to France, but soon sank into poverty, and had to work as a casual labourer to support his wife and family. The hardships endured by Babeuf during his early years contributed to the development of his political opinions. His father gave him a basic education, but until the outbreak of the Revolution, he was a domestic servant, and from 1785 occupied the office of Commissaire Terrier, assisting the nobles and priests in the assertion of their feudal rights over the peasants. Accused of abandoning the feudal aristocracy, he would later say that the son of the French Revolution had brought him to view his mother, the feudal system, as a hydra with a hundred heads. Topic. Revolutionary activities Babeuf was working for a land surveyor at Roy when the revolution began. His father had died in 1780, and he now had to provide for his wife and two children, as well as for his mother, brothers and sisters. He was a prolific writer, and the signs of his future socialism are contained in a letter of 21 March 1787, one of a series mainly on literature and addressed to the secretary of the Academy of Arras. In 1789 he drew up the first article of the Cahier of the Electors of the Bailiage of Roy, demanding the abolition of feudal rights. From July to October 1789, he lived in Paris, superintending the publication of his first work, Cadastre Perpetuel, dédié à l'Assemblée Nationale, l'an 1789 et la première de la Liberté Française. National Cadastre or Land Register, dedicated to the National Assembly, year 1789 and the first one of French liberty", which was written in 1789 and issued in 1790. The same year he published a pamphlet against feudal aids and the gabelle salt tax, for which he was denounced and arrested, but provisionally released. <laughs> Political writings and imprisonment In October, on his return to Roy, he founded the correspondent Picard, a political journal that would have 40 issues. Babeuf used his journal to agitate for a progressive taxation system, and condemned the «census suffrage» plan for the 1791 elections to the Legislative Assembly in which citizen votes would be weighted by their social standing. Due to his political activities, he was arrested on 19 May 1790, but released in July before the Fête de la Fédération, thanks to pressure exerted nationally by Jean-Paul Merritt. In November Babeuf was elected a member of the municipality of Roy, but was expelled. In March 1791, Babeuf was appointed commissioner to report on the national property Biens Nationaux in the town, and in September 1792 was elected a member of the Council General of the Department of the Somme. A rivalry with the principal administrator and later deputy to the convention, André Dumont, forced Babeuf to transfer to the post of administrator of the district of Montdidier. There he was accused of fraud for having altered a name in a deed of transfer of national lands. 
The error was probably due to negligence, but, distrusting the impartiality of the judges of the Somme, he fled to Paris, and on 23 August 1793 was sentenced in contumacium to 20 years imprisonment. Meanwhile he had been appointed secretary to the Relief Committee Comité des Subsistences of the Paris Commune. The judges of Amiens pursued him with a warrant for his arrest, which took place in Brumaire of the year 2 1794. The Court of Cassation quashed the sentence, through defect of form, and sent Bebeuf for a new trial before the Ain Tribunal, which acquitted him on 18 July 1794, only days before the Thermidorian reaction. Bebeuf returned to Paris, and on 3 September 1794 published the first issue of his Journal de la Liberté de la Presse, whose title was changed on 5 October 1794 to La Tribune du Pupil. The execution of Maximilien Robespierre on 28 July 1794 had ended the Reign of Terror and begun the White Terror. Bebeuf, now self-styled Gracchus Bebeuf, defended the fallen terror politicians with the stated goal of achieving equality. In fact, and not only by proclamation. However about the terror, he said, I object to this particular aspect of their system. Bebeuf attacked the leaders of the Thermidorian reaction and, from a socialist point of view, the economic outcome of the revolution. He also argued for the inclusion of women into the political clubs. This was an attitude which had few supporters, even in the Jacobin club, and in October Bebeuf was arrested and imprisoned at Arras. Here he was influenced by political prisoners, notably Philippe Buonarroti, Simon Duplay, and René-François Lebois, editor of the Journal de l'Égalité and afterwards of the Lamy du Pupil papers of Leclerc which carried on the traditions of Jean-Paul Merritt. Bebeuf emerged from prison a confirmed advocate of revolution and convinced that his project, fully proclaimed to the world in issue 33 of his Tribune, could only come about through the restoration of the Constitution of 1793. That constitution had been ratified by a national referendum by universal male suffrage but never implemented. In February 1795, Bebeuf was arrested again, and the Tribune du Pupil was solemnly burnt in the Théâtre des Bergères by the Yoines Doré, young men whose mission was to root out Jacobinism. Bebeuf might have faded into obscurity like other agitators, but for the appalling economic conditions caused by the fall in the value of assignats. Topic. Société des Ego The attempts of the Directory to deal with the economic crisis gave Bebeuf his historical importance. The new government wanted to abolish the system which benefited Paris at the expense of all France. To this goal, the government planned to abolish the sale of bread and meat at nominal prices, on 20 February 1796. The announcement caused widespread consternation. Workers and the large class of proletarians attracted to Paris by the system, as well as rentiers and government officials, whose incomes were paid in assignats arbitrarily set by the government, felt threatened with starvation. The government yielded to the outcry, and tried to mitigate the problem by dividing people entitled to relief into classes, but this only increased alarm and discontent. The universal misery gave point to Bebeuf's virulent attacks on the existing order and gained him a hearing. He gained a small circle of followers known as the Société des Ego, soon merged with the rump of the Jacobin Club, who met at the Pantheon. In November 1795, police reported that Bebeuf was openly preaching, "...insurrection, revolt and the Constitution of 1793." The group was influenced by Sylvain Maréchal, the author of Le Manifeste des Ego and a sympathizer of Bebeuf. For a time, the government left Bebeuf alone but observed his activities. The Directory benefited from the socialist agitation because it counteracted royalist movements for overthrowing the Directory. Most workers, even of extreme views, were repelled by Bebeuf's bloodthirstiness, and police reported that his agitation increased support for the government. The Jacobin Club refused to admit Bebeuf and Lebois, on the ground that they were throat cutters, agorgers. However, the economic crisis increased Bebeuf's influence. After Napoleon Bonaparte closed the Club of the Pantheon on 27 February 1796, Bebeuf increased his activity. In Ventos and Germinal late winter and early spring under the pseudonym La Lande, Soldat de la Patterie, Bebeuf published the paper, Scout of the People, or Defender of 25 Million Oppressed. 
Éclaireur du pupil, ou la défenseur de 25 millions de primes, which was passed from group to group secretly in the streets of Paris. At the same time, issue 40 of Bebeuf's Tribune caused immense sensation as it praised the authors of the September massacres as deserving well of their country, and declared that a more complete the 2nd of September was needed to destroy the government, which consisted of starvers, bloodsuckers, tyrants, hangmen, rogues, and mountebanks. Distress among all classes continued. In March, the Directory tried to replace assignats by a new issue of mandats and this raised hopes, but they were soon dashed. A rumor that national bankruptcy had been declared caused thousands of the lower class of workers to rally to Bebeuf's ideas. On 4 April 1796, the government received a report that 500,000 Parisians needed relief. From the 11th of April, Paris was placarded with posters headed Analysis of Bebeuf's teaching, Analyse de la doctrine de Babeuf, sic, Tribune du Pupil, which began with the sentence, Nature has given to every man the right to the enjoyment of an equal share in all property, and ended with a call to restore the Constitution of 1793. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest and execution Bebeuf's song Dying of hunger, dying of cold. Morant de fame, morant de Freud, set to a popular tune, began to be sung in cafes, with immense applause. Reports circulated that the disaffected troops of the French Revolutionary Army in the camp of Grenelle were ready to join an insurrection against the government. The Bureau Central had accumulated through its agents, notably ex Captain Georges Grizzle, who was initiated into Bebeuf's society, evidence of a conspiracy, later called the conspiracy of equals. For an armed uprising fixed for 22 Florial, year IV, the 11th of May 1796, which involved Jacobins and socialists, the Directory thought it time to react. On the 10th of May, Bebeuf, who had taken the pseudonym Tiso, was arrested. Many of his associates were gathered by the police on order from Lazare Carnot. Among them were Augustin Alexander Darthe and Philippe Buonarroti, the ex-members of the National Convention, Robert Lindet, Jean-Pierre André Amar, Marc Guillaume Alexis Vadir, and Jean Baptiste Drouet, famous as the postmaster of Saint Menehold, who had arrested Louis XVI during the latter's flight to Varennes, and now a member of the Directory's Council of 500. The government crackdown was extremely successful. The last issue of the Tribune appeared on 24 April, although René-François Lebois in the Lamy du Pupil tried to incite the soldiers to revolt, and for a while there were rumours of a military uprising, Bebeuf and his accomplices were to be tried at the newly created High Court at Vendôme. When the prisoners were removed from Paris on 10 and 11 Fructidor the 27th of August and the 28th of August 1796, there were tentative efforts at a riot hoping to rescue the prisoners, but these were easily suppressed. On 7 September 1796, 500 or 600 Jacobins tried to rouse the soldiers at Grenelle but also failed. The trial was held at Vendôme beginning on 20 February 1797. Although more important people were involved in the conspiracy, the government depicted Bebeuf as the leader. His own vanity played into their hands. On 7 Prairial, the 26th of May 1797, Bebeuf and Darthe were condemned to death. Some of the prisoners, including Buonarroti, were deported. The rest, including Vadir and his fellow conventionals, were acquitted. Drouet managed to escape, according to Paul Barris, with the connivance of the Directory. Bebeuf and Darthe were guillotined the next day at Vendôme, 8 Prairial, the 27th of May 1797. Without appeal, Bebeuf's body was transported and buried in a mass grave in the Vendôme's old cemetery of the Grand Faubourg, in Loire et Cher. Topic: Quotes. Society must be made to operate in such a way that it eradicates once and for all the desire of a man to become richer, or wiser, or more powerful than others. The French Revolution was nothing but a precursor of another revolution, one that will be bigger, more solemn, and which will be the last. See also Neo Babouvism Pierre Antoine Antonel Society of the Friends of Truth Topic Notes Topic References 
Baines, T. S., ed. 1878. François Noël Bebeuf. Encyclopædia Britannica, 3, 9th ed., New York, Charles Scribner's Sons, p. 179. Ernest Belfort Bax, Last Episodes of the French Revolution, Haskell House Pub Ltd. 1911, reprinted 1971, ISBN 0-8383-1282-9 Ian H. The Spectre of Babeuf, Palgrave Macmillan 1997, hardcover, 204 pages, ISBN 0-312-17365-2 or ISBN 0-312-17365-2 Philippe Buonarroti, translated by James Bronter O'Brien, Baybuff's Conspiracy for Equality, Hetherington 1836, first English edition, Kelly 1965, hardcover, 454 pages original text on books.google.com Asterisk Ferre, François, and Mona Ozouf, eds. A Critical Dictionary of the French Revolution 1989, pp 179–85, Rose, R. B. Gracious Babeuf, The First Revolutionary Communist, Stanford University Press 1978, hardcover, ISBN 0-8047-0949-1 or Routledge 1978, hardcover, ISBN 0-7131-5993-6 Soul, George. Ideas of the Great Economists, New York, Viking Press. 1953, Attribution. Phillips, Walter Allison 1911. Babeuf, François Noël. In Chisholm, Hugh, Encyclopædia Britannica, 3 11th ed., Cambridge University Press, pp. 93–94. External links Quotations related to François Noël Babeuf at Wikiquote Gratius Babeuf and the Conspiracy of the Equals, Documents on Marxists.org. Gratius Babeuf and the Conspiracy of the Equals by Belfort Bax. Ian H. Burkle, Morris, Bax and Babeuf, Review of Bax's Book.